Jahan Nujem, Kareem Amir, uh, congratulations on The Square, which is nominated for Best Documentary Feature at the Oscars. Uh, Hosni Mubarak was deposed three years ago today, but there have, has been a lot of violence in Egypt in recent months. Uh, looking back now, do you think uh, Egypt is moving in the right direction or the wrong direction? Um, I think that this, uh, the movement for change has been a dance where there's two steps forward, one step back, three steps forward, four steps back, and I think it's going to be an ongoing dance. Uh, what keeps me optimistic, though, is that if, if you've seen the film or if you've been to Tahrir, you know that there is a dedicated few who will remain and who will continue to push forth until the dreams of what we all knew was, were possible in that square during those initial 18 days are realized. And if you remember, how did you, how did you, if you remember the chance, go ahead. if you remember the chance that um, were in the early days of the revolution, it was bread, freedom, social justice. It was not the removal of Mubarak. It was not to replace the government. It was changes of, uh, w which meant some very basic changes for human rights and social justice, which are basic uh, needs that people across Egypt were asking for, regardless of political background. And that that still has to be realized, and people are still struggling for it. And the struggle is long, as you see in the film. Um, our characters say near the end of the film, this is going to be a long struggle. And if you look at any struggle around the world, um, whether it's the struggle against apartheid, whether it's uh, the civil rights movement in the United States, these struggles take a lot of patience. Um, and our characters are, are still on the ground fighting for change, and so it's difficult, I think, for us as Egyptians who have a big stake in what's going on, who grew up in the country, who, who have family, who live there, my family lives there, um, to, to see articles that are, have come out in the West that have said, well, this is a failed state. You know, the, the, the uprising has not succeeded. Um, the government that's taking over now shows that everything was for nothing. No. Uh, what does that say then to the people that are still struggling on the ground every day, the thousands that are in prison, Raji Omran, our character, who fights every day to get them out? This struggle is ongoing, and what we're so excited about with this film is that it's coming out at a time when the, 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 the positives of the people that are fighting on the ground, um, need these people need to be supported. And, they need the, and the conversation needs to be brought to an international level. And it has been with... with, 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 with um, you know, with, with the, the film coming out and with the Oscar nomination, um, you know, what Ahmed said when he first heard about it was, it means that our story will never be able to be silenced. And that makes us so excited. Because even though film can't change the world, the people that watch them can. And so if we're able to make some kind of contribution to the conversation as events are ch happening on the ground now and as people are still struggling, we feel like we've made some small contribution. The footage you capture of the events on the ground is extremely tense and often violent. Uh, did you feel a great sense of risk to your own personal safety uh, while you were documenting the revolution? I think that um, we learned a great deal from our characters. If you'd asked me a few years ago whether I would be running from police or army or tear gas or imprisoned, um, I would have said, no way, you're nuts. It's but very hard to make a film when the director keeps getting arrested, by the way. Uh, I would not advise that to any productions who may be watching. Uh, when your director is a woman and she's fierce and doesn't understand what danger means, keeps getting arrested, it, it's, it's quite complicated. Well, I think... I think um, I think when you're when you're telling people that you're following that what you're doing is you're recording a story that and you're asking them to open their lives and trust you to tell this story to bring this story out to the world and in doing so these characters that you're following are putting their lives at risk are putting their lives at risk as we speak because this film is coming out there in a big way um, you're also making the commitment to put yourself through and put yourself in the same risks that the people that you're filming are in. So if that means that they're being jailed and tear gassed and shot at, then you have to be willing to put yourself in that position as well. And in that way, fear disappears because you as well are fighting for something bigger than yourself. And that's why this entire, this, this film came together very organically. It's a film that was born from Tahrir. All of the it mirrored very much the revolution. All of the, the, the cast of people 
that made the film came together in Tahrir, and they wouldn't have been able to make it unless they were there first I mean, as protesters. Ahmed, the main character, you know, he learns how to film um, during the making of this film. He became a deep, you know, he became a very talented filmmaker and started shooting, and he actually ended up shooting a quarter of the movie. And when I was talking to him about the the incredible, you know, momentum that the film was gaining around the world and, and how exciting it was, he said, you know, Kareem, don't forget that this film stared death in the eyes. And, you know, something fundamental that's much bigger than us is guiding it and shaping it and pushing it forward. And we've been so honored to see it connect, as Jahan was saying, to so many audiences around the world, from different parts of the world, from different backgrounds, ages, who understand that, you know, who, under, who can connect to our characters' emotional struggle um, and understand that it's part of a global struggle. You know, when we see uh, squares coming up in Kiev, in Istanbul, in, 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 in Athens, uh, in Rio, we realize that something fundamental is happening on the ground and that it's not just about a, a local fight in Egypt. Now, what's especially impressive to me about uh, the square is the amount of clarity you're able to bring to all the opposing forces and, and, and viewpoints involved from, you know, Mahdi who, of the Muslim Brotherhood and, and the military and, and, and the other uh, characters in the film who want a more inclusive democracy. Was that one of the biggest challenges to try and capture and distill so many different points of view? I think that we could never, ever, ever pretend to have represented journalistically every point of view that existed in Egypt or in that square. Um, what we tried to do was we, we, felt, we found characters that we fell in love with that would humanize the experience of the last few years in Egypt. You can read endless articles and books and papers on what's been happening to Egypt at the highest levels of government and in the Brotherhood and in the military. But what's difficult for people and audience to get is that visceral feeling of what it actually felt like to be in that square. And that required going very deeply into the personal stories of the characters we chose. So in no way do we pretend to have made some kind of overview of the revolution or covered every point of view. We found three characters that we fell in love with and that inspired us and that we knew would take us to places that we had never seen before. And Ahmed was this brilliant street poet grew up as the son of a vegetable seller who was illiterate, yet had an articulateness to him and a vision for what was happening on the ground in Egypt that was absolutely incredible. Negdi had this open heart and this willingness to challenge this organization and question this organization that he had been a part of, Brotherhood, for 25 years. Khaled could have been any place in the world, but you know, an actor, a well-known actor who starred in The Kite Runner, but he chose to be in that square. Raji Omran, who is fighting on the front lines of change every single day, getting hundreds of people out of prison and fighting for change in the court system. These are people that are individuals that are on the front lines of change that are pushing for change. And what they share among them is this very principled nature where they are refusing to give up on those principles and they're putting everything on the line to fight for them. And even though they come from very different backgrounds, that's what they share, and, and they're inspiring. They were inspiring to us, which is why we could follow them. Absolutely. After the, uh, after the film premiered at the Sundance Film Festival last year, continued developments uh, on the ground led you to update it before its eventual release. Uh, do you anticipate adding to it again, or maybe perhaps even making a sequel? equal to the film since, uh, you know, of, of course, as, as you said, the, uh, the situation is still ongoing there? We are not journalists. We're artists. Um, and we've made a film that we believe stands on its own two feet in 10 years, 50 years, 100 years from now. Um, our characters went through an emotional arc and got to a place where we felt we could end the story because they came to a place where they said this struggle is long and what this means is that we have to continue holding government accountable. Um, having said that, what's exciting about releasing a film online on Netflix and we're figuring out how to release it outside of Netflix's territories as well, um, releasing it in Egypt online, Geoblock for Egypt and in other places, is that the conversation can continue online um, where people can watch this film and then be directed to our Facebook page, The Square, at our Facebook page, hashtag The Square. The conversation continues. We have 1,600 hours of footage where we're still filming on the ground where we can do updates to continue the conversation going. Having said I, that, I don't know, know if I'll be making sequels. No, I mean, yeah, I, I think <laughs> that, 
I think that the film stands, uh, and but again, this is a very small part of a of a huge story. You know, the Egyptian Revolution is one of the, uh, and the Arab Spring as a, as a wider context is is one of the the you know the most significant social movements in history, and it's going to continue to take place. It's going to continue to to have events that shape it for years to come. So we're very honored to be part of this conversation. And we were looking forward to seeing all kinds of other work come out about it. And there's many other films that are being worked on now. I mean, we have friends. We have a friend that's making a film about so, uh, women. We have another friend that's making a film inside the police stations uh, and from the police perspective. Um, so there's a number of other films made by incredible filmmakers that are coming out soon, representing the many different perspectives that exist in Egypt. But we feel excited about the release of the film right now because the you know once again we have an opportunity uh, as a world audience to tap into this story and, and 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 level the playing field just like when the original protest movement happened in January and audiences around the world tuned in they that audience that power of witness protected the protesters in that square and they helped level the playing field from one where it was the lonely Egyptian protesters versus the Egyptian dictator to the Egyptian protester being supported and protected by the world. So we now, you know, being on the stage of the Academy Awards, have the ability to continue that, to continue to reestablish that power of witness and show how stories can change the world. Yeah, as you both mentioned about, you know, you know, this this revolution, this movement being captured by cameras, being seen online on YouTube, and being able able to stream this film now uh, across various platforms. Uh, it, it's both the power uh, of, the, of, of the multimedia to change the revolution and the conversation, and, and it feels like documentaries in general uh, in this day and age of, of Netflix and other streaming services, you know, it, it's, it's much easier to, to get that exposure, to get your voice heard in that way. Have you found that that's the case, that it has been... Uh, easier to, to, to get this film seen and discussed than it maybe would have been 10, 15 years ago? Well, there's an incredible connectivity now online. I mean, that's what's really exciting. I mean, watching Ahmed's lines that we're looking for a consciousness be, you know, translated and reposted and tweeted in Chinese and Spanish and Portuguese, um, you know, is, is inspiring. To the fact that people are having conversations um, you know, between a square in Kiev and, you know... And, and then and the fact that then the, those same people can then find Ahmed and other people on social media and connect to them directly, I think, is also exciting. I mean, it's showing... I think that the tools of social media and, and the power of the Internet is, is really um, fundamentally changing the way that we view ourselves and our relations to others. And I think that... What's happening in these squares is very evident of that. You know, it's it's when you see it in all these different squares, whether it's Kiev, Istanbul, Cairo, you start to realize that young people are no longer willing to be trapped in the stories that they have been told for years, and we're breaking free of the borders that we live in and the borders that our countries may be, in, and starting to create all kinds of new conversations and stories. So I think it's in a really exciting time to be making documentary films that are about real issues and that connect you to real characters who, who can continue the conversation. And, you know, I think it's, it's, we're just in the beginning phases of understanding all of this. Yeah, as you've said before, uh, that, you know, the, the situation is sort of two steps forward, one step back sometimes. Uh, uh, you know, are there causes for for optimism? Like, are there specific positive developments you've been seeing recently that that would that would you lead you to believe that that uh, uh, this you know this will this will end positively ultimately? As I said, I think it's a long struggle, and I think that we would be um, to deny that it's a very dark time right now in Egypt would be to you know to deny the thousands of people that are in prison right now. Having said that. Um, there are positive changes that we that, that do get overshadowed by the darkness, and you know, for example, the constitution still has problems in it. But with the new constitution, there are more checks and balances on the president than there have been before. Um, there are more there there are more checks and balances yeah. um, in in the government. So there are positive changes without going into great detail because you know 
there are other people that you could speak to rather than to filmmakers that are a lot more knowledgeable about the specifics on the ground in Egypt and the legal situations and the constitution. But um, I the, think that it's you know I think it's 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 it, as we said I think it, it's 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 the idea of how we believe change happens is what's fundamentally uh, un uh, you know has no bearing with reality. You know, it, it meaning that. We, we live in this world where we're told these fairy tale stories of change and that's what we choose to believe and see when the reality is that's never how change, great change has ever happened. As, you know, it's always a dedicated few that are usually in a lonely fight that once in a while are able to inspire the majority. Um, and it's a slow, it's a slow process. You know, uh, I think that the, trans the great transformations that we seek in society as long as we keep seeing them in this kind of greatest hits moments where we see Gandhi liberating India or we see Martin Luther King say I have a dream or we see uh, Mandela you know uh, at, 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 at the stage uh, you know accepting the Nobel Prize uh, we don't see the dark realities we don't see Mandela in jail for, for those 20 something years we don't see Martin Luther King when he didn't believe in what he was doing anymore we don't see Gandhi when he was at his weakest and so in such, we, we have to kind of dispel ourselves from these fantasy stories of change being fast, quick, and easy, and realizing that there's the revolution and then there's the evolution. And the evolution, like most evolutionary processes, is, is, operates at a snail's pace, and it's not as romantic and sexy as we'd like it to be. Once we start viewing it that way, I think we'll start to have a better grasp on how change happens. Now, um, in addition to being nominated for the Oscar... Uh uh, Jahan, uh, you just won the Directors Guild Award for The Square. Uh, you also won that award in 2001 for Startup.com, which was your first uh, feature documentary. Uh, uh, how did this experience differ winning for, for The Square compared to you know, your feature debut winning for that one? Daniel, this is a, we have enough time for this last question. Um, it's 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 such a great honor to have been awarded the DGA award by my peers, by people that really love and respect and understand the craft of filmmaking. So in both cases, um, when I won the award uh, in 2001 for Startup.com with my co-director Chris Hedges, um, who was a mentor of mine, and uh, a week ago uh, when we, when I won for the Square. Um, was both both incredible honors. Having said that, I do feel like the awards that this film is being given right now is the stakes are higher. The fact that this film is coming out at a time when things are changing on the ground in Egypt, when the people that are fighting for change desperately need to be supported. The fact that I've directed a film um, with a number of other talented filmmakers um, that has really connected people emotionally to the people that are struggling on the ground is something that I feel um, very proud of because I feel like that puts their conversation and their struggle on an international level and there's no more crucial time than now for them to be supported. Um, Having said that also, I made this film with a team of filmmakers in the square. This is the most personal but and collaborative film that I've ever made. So I really share that award with uh, the, the, the whole crew of over 40 Egyptian filmmakers that came together in the square to make this. Well, uh, I want to thank you very much for your time, for, for speaking with me today, uh, and I want to wish you the best of luck both at the Oscars and, and with this film as it's seen around the world and, and hopefully continues to affect uh, positive change in, in, in Egypt and throughout the world. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thanks for having us.